All right, it's time for QB1 with Chrissy Freud, and Drew Locke is the quarterback of the day. Chrissy, a little bit of inconsistency from Drew Locke over the course of his NFL career. To what do you attribute that? Yeah, I think that he's shown that he can elevate a struggling team. I think that that really came through in his rookie season, but he's also shown that he's not effective on a regular basis as you would want your long-term starter to be. And that being said, he was taken off the bench, put into the fire during his rookie season, and they were 3-8, and eight, then finished at 7-9. and nine. Quarterback wins aren't a stat. I think that everyone knows that. But when you look at the film and look at that season, you can kind of just see how he factored in. And so I think while he provided some pop, um, I think that he seemed to be just a little bit behind in reading defenses and needs to get better from the mental standpoint with things like that. And outside of some of his own personal flaws as a quarterback, I don't think that the hiring of Pat Shermer at offensive coordinator did him any favors either. Yeah. Why do you say that? Yeah, I just think that maybe just the, some of the play calling, some of the things within the system um, just needed a little bit of work. And then I think that it didn't really fit him well. And I think that a change of scenery uh, could potentially help him. Yeah, you know, it's interesting what Seattle has done, Chrissy, because you have a huge void left by Russell Wilson and some promises or speculation that they might address that void in a couple of different ways. And then here you are knocking on the doorstep of the regular season and you've got Drew Locke as a really realistic starter for you, depending on how it goes in training camp. I mean, is Drew Locke good enough to be a day in, day out starter? Yeah, I think that he's kind of shown that he has the ceiling to be so. I think that Pete Carroll, uh, the Seattle's, uh, the Se I'm sorry, the Seattle Seahawks head coach, I think that he's shown a lot of interest and is intrigued by the ceiling. And this doesn't seem to just be like a test run, let's get an insurance policy, that kind of thing. I think that he really believes in his potential. But at the same time, the Seahawks definitely have one of the most questionable quarterback competitions in the NFL, one of the most questionable rooms overall. So it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. And then a Drew Locke can become the same Drew Locke that we saw in some of those flashes that he showed. Yeah, I think some of his inconsistencies have been exposed. When you think about his best traits, I mean, the stuff that he really has going for him, if Seattle can, like you say, salvage this situation and figure out what they're actually going to do inside that room. I mean, what are his best sort of traits? I think he throws the deep ball well. And then also the fact that he's 25 years old, that seems so basic but he's a younger guy. He's played a decent enough uh, amount of football, not super experienced, uh, obviously not as old as Geno Smith. But like I said earlier, I think that that could work out um, in his favor just for the long term, because Geno Smith does not have a lot of juice left in him as far as just how the situation's the situation's going to shake out moving forward. Um, so I think that could work in his favor. And then if he becomes what Pete Carroll seems to think he can be based on some of those flashes, based on the way that he throws the ball, uh, then I think that we could see him take a step here potentially. Yeah, having the faith of the head coach, I'm sure, goes a long way in terms of boosting confidence, maybe writing some of those inconsistencies. Do you think that some of the criticism that Drew Locke has received over the course of his career in Denver um, has been fair, has been warranted? Or are we potentially going to see something here with a, a situation, like you said, we might have to figure out what's going on with the assistant coaches, but developing a relationship with Pete Carroll where he actually exceeds expectations? Yeah, I think it's just the ups and downs that he had there that gets frustrating for any NFL fan base. When we look at the quarterback position, they shoulder a lot of the blame, but they also get too much of the praise sometimes. And then just looking back at the history of Denver, this is a fan base that have been, it's just been starved of good quarterback play for a while now. It's been about five, just looking at the past five years, he was probably one of the more exciting guys that they had. And so now they have Russell Wilson in there. Um, I think that's something that they can be confident in. But you think back, so whenever they had like the John Elways, the Peyton Mannings, and I think that this is just a fan base that's grown a little bit tired and wants to see somebody step up there that can come in game in and game out and get the job done. Yeah, that's a great point, Chrissy. So, I mean, they've got their guy. We'll see what happens in Seattle uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks. QB1 with Chrissy Freud. Chrissy, thanks.